Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to make a 12 volt system. Uh, all it's going to be is it's going to be uh, some 12 volt batteries uh, connected in parallel. Uh, they're going to be connected to a, you know, a bus bar you could say. Uh, and then I'm going to connect that to an inverter to be able to try and charge my 24 volt system uh, whenever I feel it's necessary. But I don't want to do the the typical connecting all the same type of batteries to a you know a, a four stud bus bar. I want to try something different because I have a lot of different 12 volt batteries and I don't want to use it the typical bus bar. I want to use a uh, I want to use a fuse block just because I want to see if it works. The idea of this is not to power large loads. It's actually just to maybe push, I don't know, 200 watts of power into my 24 volt system uh, whenever I feel it's, it's necessary. So there isn't going to be much amperage going through this system. I want to see if everything works the way I think it would. And I kind of want to test it to show you uh, that it can be done or maybe that it can't be done. So let's go ahead and try it out. First of all, here are the batteries I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a 50 amp hour uh, ampere time battery. And it's going to be paralleled with a 100 amp hour Uniwix battery. And it's also going to be paralleled with a 275 amp Sunfit, Sunfun Kits battery. So these are the three batteries that I'm going to have in parallel for my system. All right, the next thing I'm going to be using instead of a uh, instead of bus bars, I'm going to be using a 100 amp fuse block. And with this fuse block, I'm going to be connecting all the batteries together with 12 gauge wire. And I'll be putting fuses in each one. Now, I'll probably the 12 gauge wire can handle up to 30 amps but I'm probably going to use less than that. I'm probably going to go ahead and just put, I don't know, 20, 20 amp fuses in each one. And again, I don't want to put a lot of amps through this system. Also in the system, I'll probably be using an Elnex, uh, Elnex battery monitor. And I was thinking about using this 150 amp fuse, but I don't think I might need it if I have this fuse block with all the fuses in there already. So I'm not going to use this. And then lastly, I'm going to be using this uh, Alpha 1500 watt power inverter. Um, I do know that if I max this out, I can get up to, you know, 115 to 120 amps. So that's something I need to be careful of. Um, and this is really only for a test. If I stick with this system, I'll be purchasing uh, probably a 600 watt or a thousand watt inverter. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that all the wire that's connecting my batteries to this fuse block right here, I need to make sure they're all the same length because you don't, you want to have the same, you want to have the same voltage drop in your wiring. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and I'm going to cut these into two foot sections so that way they're all the same length and uh, I know that they'll fit in the area that I want to put this into. Alright, so first let's measure and cut our cable. Alright, here's all my two foot sections of positive cable. Now to cut my negative. Ok, 
Okay, here's all my negative cable. Now all I gotta do is put connectors on uh, three positives and three negatives. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. All right, and here are the, uh, the connectors I plan on putting on the wire. First, I'm gonna be using these little tiny ringlets right here. And these, and these are gonna be going right here onto uh, my fuse block. And then on the other side, on the other side of the wire, I'm gonna be using these bigger ringlets to actually connect to the batteries. And I thought about using these instead of these, but I don't want there to be any chance of this wire accidentally coming out of the fuse box. So that's why I'm gonna use these, these ringlets right here. All right, we got one wire set ready, two more to go. All right, I'm all done with my wiring. So uh, next, I just need to uh, use a heat gun to shrink all of these and my wiring is all ready to go. Just like that. Perfect. All right, I got all of my cabling done, crimped, connected, and shrunk. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wire them all onto this fuse block. And then after that, I need to uh, test the voltage of all my batteries because I honestly need to make sure that they are all at 100%. They should all be exactly the same voltage. If you have a battery that's empty and you connect a battery that's full, uh, all of that amperage is gonna go rushing into that empty battery. And that is not what I want. My fuse block is all wired up and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 20 amp fuses in here. All right, my fuses are in. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side and bring over the batteries. Okay, I have all of these batteries charging now. Um, I got one that I got the big boy, which is almost full already, uh, but it's charging with a, uh, a 10 amp charger. This uh, 50 amp battery is charging with a 20 amp charger and it's almost full. It says 14.8, but I keep measuring it. And it's right on, it's almost at 14.6. And then I have the Uniwix down here charging and uh, let's see what let's see what it measures at. It's measuring 13.72. All right. Well, I just got done charging up these three batteries, and after they've been sitting for about 10 minutes, their voltages are all uh, pretty different. Let's check them out. Okay. So first, we're going to check this small 50 amp battery. And it is at 13.75. Then we'll check the big battery. It's at 14.02. And then we'll check this 100 amp battery. And it's at 13.4. They all show that they're full. So I'm wondering if I can go ahead and start paralleling them and we can watch the amperage go between the batteries. That's what I'd like to do. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the 50 amp battery and the 100 amp battery onto that fuse block. And we are going to measure the amperage that's going through the wires when those get connected. All right, first of all, putting on some safety glasses because I have no idea what's really going to happen. And then the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect the negative 
Okay, nice and tight. And we'll go ahead and connect this negative over here. Okay. And now let's go ahead and connect this top positive over here. Let's go ahead and connect this positive to this battery over here. Actually, and I'm just going to touch it just to make sure this thing doesn't pop as soon as I touch it. So, all right, ready? Okay, and nothing happened. So, let's go ahead and... Okay, now these two batteries are connected to the fuse block. Here and here for the positives here and here for the negatives. So let's do some measurements. First of all, let's check the amperage. And it looks like there is three amps going into this battery right here. So we're perfectly safe with what we're doing right now. Yeah, and it's going down. And it looks like it looks like it, it, they're balancing out because you can see that the amp the amps are going down and down and down. This, now it says it, it's just going down. It says 1.7 now. Let's see what this one says. Yeah, and see this one says negative. This one says negative 1.7. DC voltage. Our voltage on the 100 amp battery is 13.41. Voltage on the 50 amp battery is 13.44. Yeah, let's zero it out. There we go. Yeah, so there's still like one amp. There's one amp being drawn from this 50 amp battery across here and into this battery. So it does show a parallel connection. Okay, but my question now is I want to hook up this big 275 amp hour battery. Let's look at our amperage. Yeah, the amperage now, the draw is now 0.65. Yeah, or point, you know, 0 0.65, 0 0.66. So, these two, these two batteries are almost balanced out already. But, they are at like 13.42 is the voltage. Yeah, they're at 13.4 and this big battery is at 13.95 so I mean that's a half a volt but I, I want to go ahead and connect it because I want to see I want to see what what it will do I'm sure that it will push some energy into these two batteries but will it will it push it both at the same rate or will it push double the amount over to this one because this one's 100 amp and this one's only 50. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect the negative. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and connect the positive. Okay, everything is now connected together. So let's see what kind of amp draw we have. Zero it out. And it looks like it's a 9.5 amp draw. And it looks like it's going down pretty fast. So how much is being pulled to here? Looks like 2.11. And this one is 6.5. So yeah. 
Six of it's going here, two of it's going here, and it's all coming from here. So they're all they're all balancing out. Yeah, I mean look at that, it's going down super fast. 7.5, 7.3. Some point two, and let's see what's being, and this is now an amp, and this one is 5.8 amps. All right, when I'm checking the voltages, the 100 amp battery is 13.48. The Sun, the Sun Fun Kits battery is 13.57. And the ampere time 50 amp battery is 13.52. Let's go ahead and check the voltage on the actual fuse block. Yeah, the voltage on the fuse block is actually 13.52. I just didn't want to touch that. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I just I just realized something that's that's pretty neat. Um, these three batteries are in parallel, but I just measured the amperage of all of them. And the amperage going into this 50 amp battery, it's only 0.2. But if you measure the amperage coming from this battery, it's still 2.2. So that means that this battery is... That means this battery is about as full as it can get and now this battery is pushing electricity over to this one. So they all get balanced out. Because this battery is receiving 2 point, well it says 2.3, so let's see what this says again. 2.1, yeah 2.1 over here, going into 2.3 over here. So wait a minute, actually, you know what that means? That means that, okay, there's, there's two, okay, 2.06 coming from this battery. And there's 0.2 coming from this battery. So this battery and this battery are now feeding this battery. This one just a little bit and this one with, uh, you know, a couple amps. So I think that's really neat how it balances out. But none of these, none of these are pushing or pulling the same amount of amperage. Uh, it's, it's all different. Okay, well, I am going to call it a night. Um, I'm going to let these batteries balance out. And, um, and so tomorrow, I'm going to come back and we are going to continue with this. What we're going to do is first we're going to put a charger on there and we're going to charge these batteries with um, a, you know, a 20 amp charger. And we'll see you know, what energy goes where. Um, you know, what amperage goes where. And what I really want to see is once the batteries get to full, since each one of these batteries has its own separate BMS, and since they're all, this, they're all different, you know, they're all different amp hours, I want to know what happens when you put a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate charger on there and start charging it from the fuse block First of all, what amperage is going to go where? And then what happens when the batteries, you know, what happens if they go over 14.6? What, you know, what happens, you know, are the batteries going to, is one going to take more charge than the next one and one might get into like an over voltage situation? Or will, or will, or will the amperage just even itself out throughout the batteries and they'll all charge up to 14.6 uh, perfectly and the charger won't even know the difference. So that's all coming tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. I know I am so far. I think this is pretty neat. Um, and please come back tomorrow. I'll be posting a new video uh, with, uh, with some more of this testing. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.